Hi everyone, this is Jeff of Telflare Mouse. So I'm waiting for a part to get back for one of my cameras, but in the meantime, I wanted to uh, show you guys some wild stuff that was invented in the early 1900s, just a few years after the Wright brothers' first flight. But none of these are aircraft. They're all ground-based vehicles of various designs, designed to be driven on ice, water, snow, even railroad tracks. The inventors at this time apparently thought that if propulsion by a propeller was good enough for airplanes, it should work great for everything else. This first vehicle called the wind wagon was basically a, a car frame. In fact, you could see the tires that he removed and replaced with these very sketchy skates. With over 100 years of hindsight of what not to do, we know that this thing is a death trap on many levels. Starting from the back, we have a very large homemade propeller that's probably eight feet in diameter. This giant swinging piece of wood is probably the biggest hazard of all. And driving that propeller is an exposed shaft. If that uh, driver was wearing a scarf, for example, and that got wrapped around the shaft, that would not be a pretty ending. Next, we got the driver himself. No seat belt, no helmet, no safety gear at all. And finally, this thing has no brakes. This thing's probably capable of, of going at least 50 miles an hour on that very slick ice. If something happened and you had to stop real quick, well, the best bet is probably to jump off the thing and hope you don't get wound up in that propeller. The next invention is the air-propelled motor sledge. This was to be used for an Antarctic expedition. Can you imagine being that guy in that back sled getting blasted by that very cold air from that propeller? Again, we have an unguarded propeller even closer to the driver this time just inches above his head also a lot of exposed belts and pulleys and stuff like that this had to have been absolutely miserable to ride in the noise coming from that propeller and engine had to have been deafening next we have the aero sleigh number one which is capable of speeds of 60 miles an hour on snow at least this design has some kind of braking device it has little prongs that look like a drag on the snow to slow you down. While this is a very streamlined looking machine, it's got a high center of gravity and very narrow tracks. If you turn too sharp, especially going 60 miles an hour, the occupants would get ejected and probably end up in that propeller. Next we have the homemade air propeller ice boat. They really did not believe in safety guards back then. We got an exposed blade, exposed chain or belt or whatever it's driving that thing. And nothing could be more pleasurable than sitting behind that prop wash, blasting cold air right in your face. But if you're designing a vehicle for the desert, maybe having a giant 10-foot, six-bladed propeller sitting behind you might keep you cool. This thing was capable of speeds of 50 miles an hour over sand dunes, which aren't particularly flat and smooth. Besides the obvious safety hazards of this monstrosity, it had to been, as a military vehicle, the least stealthy thing ever invented, kicking up huge amounts of dust that could be seen for miles and making a tremendous amount of noise. Now if one propeller was good, two ought to be better. This thing is designed to carry mail down a river. It has a large flat bottom hole and can actually float in one inch of water. So in many ways, this is the predecessor to the modern airboat used in swamps. And some people even credit Alexander Graham Bell as creating the first airboat, seen here, the Ugly Duckling. Here we see the Curtis airboat, using a more traditional uh, boat hull. But this is a pretty good example of the fixation they had at the time, trying to use propellers to push the air rather than use a traditional water prop. That'd be quieter, more efficient, and all that. And why would you send power directly to the wheels when you could have a giant propeller on the back of your uh, railroad boat thingy here? Pedestrians beware. Get too close and it might blow your hat off and take your head with it. This thing, kind of an early high-speed rail, was actually tested in Russia. While carrying a group of Russian delegates from Tula, Russia to Moscow, this thing derailed at a high speed, killing seven people, including the inventor. Just when you thought you saw the last of the wind wagon, not only could this thing travel on wheels, ice skates, it could also travel on a little barge. This dude was really milking out this wind wagon, trying to get it in various magazines and things. But the magazines absolutely ate this stuff up and really uh, influenced a lot of other inventors to create 
equally dangerous machines. Last but certainly not least, we have perhaps the craziest invention here, the air-propelled unicycle. Cruising the streets of St. Louis at speeds of 67 miles an hour, this dude probably got more ass than a public toilet during a cholera outbreak. I would have loved to see this thing in action. I don't know how he steers it, how he brakes it and all that, but this thing had 150 pounds of thrust from that four-foot propeller driven by a three-cylinder radial engine. All he lacks is a giant stereo system playing Born to be Wild, and he could have been right up there with the Harley dudes of today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.